it would appear that Peter Pan has been, well, panned. That is with the exception of a handful of reviews, which we will be taking a look at in just a moment. Now, I would usually say that everyone is entitled to their own opinion, which they absolutely are, and that there, there are redeeming qualities to be found, you know, within, within any film. This is, I don't know, this is a little bit different. This is a, like, if you enjoyed this movie, if you genuinely feel like you liked this movie and you enjoyed it, my God, you've got some movies to watch. It's only a kid's movie, why are you taking it so seriously? Well, guess what? It's not even good enough for kids. This movie in no way justifies its own existence. It's made utterly redundant by the original animation, Hawk and the 2000s adaptation. And this isn't me sensationalizing. I'm not, you know, this isn't hyperbole. This movie brought nothing worthwhile to the table. You might say, oh, but what about the inclusion? What about the, the Native American representation? What about the female empowerment? And sure, yeah, but those points can only hold as much weight as the movie and the characters carrying that message. You can have the best will in the world, but don't ever disregard or disrespect your first and most important job as a filmmaker to tell a compelling story, to entertain, or both. And the reason I separate those is because if you say that, you know, a filmmaker's first job is to entertain, it kind of closes the door on slightly more serious uh, tales. I mean, Saving Private Ryan, for example, I would call that a compelling story. I wouldn't say it's entertaining. You know, no one sat there like, yeah, woo! Normandy! People dying! This is, ah, oh, this is entertainment right here. Having said that though, the horrors of D-Day portrayed in the beginning of that movie was still more entertaining than Peter Pan and Wendy. And uh, you know what? That's almost not a joke. <laughs> that's, that's the sad thing. I've been seeing the term vandalism thrown about quite a lot when people refer to this movie, and I think that's quite apt, actually. You know, Peter Pan and Wendy was stood on the shoulders of a giant. In this case, you know, the original books, the original animation, Hook, etc. It was stood on the shoulders of this giant, taking full advantage of its newfound height. But then, rather than continuing to reach upwards, it then turned around and spat in the face of that very giant. Like, that's not how this works. Audiences are not going to like or respect that course of action. In the same movie that you strip Peter Pan of his character and shoot Wendy and Tiger Lily full of protagonist steroids, in the same movie with this scene... You have the boy's magic. No, this magic belongs to no boy. <laughs> the very same movie that's supposedly championing female empowerment is the very same movie where you go and remove two of the most important messages from the original pertaining to young women. That being not letting jealousy poison your opinion and ideas of others and the importance and significance of motherhood. I also saw a review of this movie from the Mary Sue and obviously you won't be surprised to hear that they've tried to attribute the majority of the criticism that this film has received to bigotry. Now that is just lazy. Like sure, if you're only objection to a film is the color of the people in it, then that is also lazy. But to try and attribute all of the criticism to bigotry is just absurd. If you care to listen to the discourse around this movie, it wouldn't take you long to realize that the main problems people have with this movie is the fact that it's soulless, it's colorless, it re removed most of the you know most iconic and favorite elements of the movie and ultimately has no reason for being, especially when you consider that you know its predecessors still exist. That's the main problem here. You, you can try and make this as political as you want, but you don't need to be an MP to realize that this movie just isn't that entertaining. With that being said, let's take a look at some of the movie reviews. Now, I do warn you, some of these takes are worse than the actual movie itself, and we're starting with the Petri dish that is Rotten Tomatoes critics. Peter Pan and Wendy is visually spectacular. No, it is, that's one of the biggest complaints people have about this movie. I mean, sure, some of the CG looks okay. And no offense to CG artists, because they are literally hard carrying Hollywood at the moment, but I'm so sick of that being a factor within movie reviews. I'd take bad CG and a good story over this kind of film any day, any day. But I don't know, maybe that's just me. Peter Pan and Wendy is visually spectacular and tells the story we all know about a boy who could fly. It's one of the better of these Disney retreads and is ultimately enough. Pfft, we're just giving up, haven't we? We're just giving up. Ah, it, it's just as shit as the others, so it's enough, I guess. What happened to wanting more? What, what happened to the human spirit? And also, I couldn't help but notice that you rate your movies on a scale from one to four, which is stupid in itself. But what's even more ridiculous than that is that you gave it a 2.5 out of four. Here's an idea. How about do it on a scale from one to 10? Then you don't need to use decimals, you daft bastard. Peter Pan and Wendy is the perfect title as Wendy shares the spotlight with Peter and at times outshines him due to her broad screen time and a determined performance. Let me get this straight, your main praise for this movie 
is that Peter Pan isn't in it that much and often gets outshone by Wendy. If a titular character is getting outshone by another, that's often more of an indication of bad writing than it is a good movie. And at no point should Wendy's in it a lot be looked at as a worthwhile statement from a person who is paid to review movies. This lady's also on the rating movies out of four hype train as well. Mmm, just going for all over. And this one's from one of the top critics apparently, and this says, the movie is entertaining and has a professional polish, but it's also very safe. You know what's also very safe? That review. One of the better live action adaptations of the fantasy classic. Name them. No, 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 come on. You brought this up, name them. Name the live action Peter Pans that this movie is better than. Go ahead. You won't. Director David Lowry has mounted a film that is very much grown up. What the hell does that mean? That's the biggest load of bourgeois nonsense. I don't want a director to mount a film. I don't want a director to mount my childhood. Thank you very much. I'd like it gently reread to me as I drift off to sleep. That isn't too much trouble. Lowry's Peter Pan and Wendy is probably the smartest of the live action Disney films to date. Jammed with irreverent sea shanties and briskly told over a commendably brief 90 minutes. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> this, the smartest of the live action Disney films, you say. That's like picking the best house brick to be beaten across the head with. That's not a fun decision and ultimately pretty pointless. And to address that last part of your point, briskly told over a commendably brief 90 minutes. Now, if you've watched any of my previous reviews, you'll know that I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm a, big, I'm a big fan of a shorter runtime. I am getting very sick of three hour long mid movies. Having said that, on the other hand, if I'm a filmmaker, at no point do I ever want to hear anyone say, I'm really happy that this ended after just an hour and a half. That's, that's such a backhanded compliment. PJ Hogan's Peter Pan remains the champ, but Lowry has made a solid contender that actually improves upon the animated version. So you're telling me that the movie isn't as good as the book, but is better than, improves upon the animation. People are allowed to have opinions. People are allowed to have opinions. People are allowed to have opinions. A gorgeous, visually interesting film that explores its set pieces with love of filmmaking, of visual storytelling, of the source material's fantastic potential. People are allowed to have opinions. People are allowed to have opinions. People are allowed to have opinions. Okay. A gulag's legal. <laughs> okay, brace yourself, guys. Uh, this is by far the worst take we've seen so far, you have been warned. Smarter and way more magical than Spielberg's Hook, PJ Hogan's Peter Pan or Joe Wright's Pan. This version, when it gets off the ground, soars. Well, okay, I've never seen Pan, so I can't speak on behalf of that, but you think that Peter Pan and Wendy is better than not only Hook, which is a lot of people's favorite iteration of Peter Pan, but the original book as well. <laughs> that's that's a spicy take you've got there my friend that is that's hot this version when it gets off the ground soars <laughs> oh we watched two very different movies one of the year's best film okay come on i'm gonna stop reading these reviews before any more of my hair falls out now some of you might be thinking okay johnny this is all very well and good but i don't hear you offering any solutions what's your solution to, to all of these awful live action remakes and it's simple really and it's what everyone's been saying this whole time if you're going to make a live action adaptation of an animation, adapt it faithfully. I know, crazy suggestion, right? Now, some of you might be saying, oh, but what's the point in remaking like a one for one replica of a movie? But if you're doing a live action adaptation, that's what it should be. If you want a different movie, if you want to tell a different story, here's an idea, go make one. Don't use established stories to compensate for your lukewarm movies. Quit leeching, go and write your own thing. Call it what you want. Do what you want with it. Cast who you want. The world is your oyster, but stop defecating upon people's childhoods in order to do that. Now, are Disney gonna correct course with the upcoming release of the live action Little Mermaid? I'd like to think so, but you know, it's not looking likely. Now, I know that the main talking point when people discuss the live action Little Mermaid is Ariel, but if we could just talk about Flounder for just a moment. You remember this guy, right? Of course you do. Well, pictures of the live action iteration surfaced online uh, a while ago and people went nuts. And rightly so, because this thing, <laughs> It's terrifying. This thing is an abomination. But as it turns out, this was actually a hoax and it turned out to be uh, fan art that was mistaken for the real thing. I don't know if that's uh, a compliment or an insult to the artist, but either way, everyone had a good laugh. It was a funny time, but for those of you that have not seen the actual live action rendition of Flounder yet, here he is. <laughs> 
know it's live action or not, but it's literally just a fish and it looks so stupid. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting, but the thing is, yellow and blue fish are a real thing. That's a thing that actually exists, but they, they made him white with black stripes. I mean, how hard can it be to make a yellow fish with blue stripes? It looks like someone just went to their local deli and was like, yeah, that's the one. And don't even get me started on Sebastian. They got rid of his big crabby lips and they've just given him an uwu face. What a time to be alive. What do you guys think is the biggest problem with Peter Pan and Wendy? Let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching the video and I look forward to seeing the next one. Take care of yourself, guys. And remember, if you're looking for props from your favorite movies and video games, go and hit the top link in my description. Raven Forge, they support me here on this channel. So if you can go and check them out, I would very much appreciate that. Thank you very much, guys. And as always, a huge shout out to my patrons and channel members. Puzzlebon, Infinite Dum Dum, David, Flunky, Michael, Jax, Koss, Texas Lawman, ATS, Dr. Melski, Yonwich, Hadziu, Saeed, Mark Maiden, Sensei Fang, Mendicant Bias, Canada Dog Romachi, Michael Terpia, Michael S, Dagger D69, nice. Saint Nemo, and Rich Warwork. Uh, we're actually wel welcoming Rich to uh, the patrons. So yeah, thank you very much, dude, for joining. Welcome to the family, and I knight you. So rich of law, welcome. Uh, it's nice to have you, my dude. And of course, a big thank you to the tier ones as well. Um, if uh, those of you who are interested in joining the Patreon, you can do so down below. Uh, and also become a channel member by hitting the members, but you know what you're doing. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for supporting me and this channel. And there we go, another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do, you little fucking bitch. Uh, but until then, take care of yourselves, guys. I'll see you all very soon.